I'm going to talk a little bit about blockchain. It's um, something new, so I will try to take something like really simple at the beginning. Um, how much of you knows what blockchain is? Come on, please raise your hands. Okay. Uh, what? How much of you knows about Bitcoin? Ethereum? Okay. Hyperledger? Oh, one, two. Okay, fine. So, uh, much people know it about no blockchain because of Bitcoin. It's not Bitcoin, indeed. Bitcoin uses a uh, uses blockchain. Blockchain is a more of a concept, not really a thing. Uh, you know. So, what blockchain is indeed? It's a um, chain of blocks. That's why it's called blockchain. So, it's um, imagine it, it's known as a decentralized database. So, it's, um, it has a at the, at the beginning, there's one block, and then every uh, every change on the network, this will be this will generate a new block that will be uh, connected to the previous block. How is it connected? It's connected by the first block, this one here. This one is the first block, then the second, third, and so on. The first block is known as the genesis block. Why is it different than the, to the others? Because in the genesis block, there's no previous block. It's the first one. For example, the second and the third, uh, all, all this data, this hash here, it's generated by using the previous hash plus the data on that, on that uh, transaction. So, on the first one, since there's no previews, it needs to exist when the chain is started. So, there's a genesis block, it, it has a, a, a NASH. On the sec when the second block is generated, it will, the hash will be represented by the previous hash plus the hash of the current transaction. And the third block is the the dash or the, or the of the um, third transaction plus the hash of the pre previous block. So if you ever heard that uh, blockchain is it's immutable, that it can't be changed, it's because of that. Because every block has the data of the previous block. But probably you now ask, how is it generated? When does those blocks? appear. Um, let me take the example of Bitcoin. It's the, the most known system, actually. So, for example, <clears throat> if I want to transfer Bitcoin to someone here, when I, trans when, I want to, when I start to transfer, this transaction will be um, represented as a block, and it will be broadcasted to every node on the network. These nodes need to validate this transaction, and then it will be, after it's validated, for at least 51% of the nodes on the network, uh, it will be added to the chain, and the transaction is done. Probably you didn't understand one thing here, that is how this block was, how, how this block appeared, and what What's, what happens on the background that, um, did any of you here uh, mine something like mining Bitcoin? Do, are you miners? Is it one miner? Okay. So you know that. But okay, for the others, let's take the example of Bitcoin. Um, when a transaction is, is done, it's represented as a block. It's sent to the blockchain, to the, to the chain, to every node. And those nodes group those transactions, insert uh, previous, the previous hash, like I was saying, the hash of the previous block to get it connected, and then solve the proof of work in the case of Bitcoin. 
there are other methods. I will talk about it. And after it's solved, it will be attached to a local block, to a local chain, and then it broadcasted to the, all the, the nodes on the network, and all of those nodes uh, need to approve this block. If this block will be approved, then it's synchronized for the, all the network, and that node gets a reward. It happens on Bitcoin because of the consensus method, the proof of work. In, for example, Ethereum uses a proof of stake, proof of elapsed time is used by Hyperledger. So it all works different, but in proof of work, it, it works this way. Sorry, just a second. But after said all of this, let me tell you a little bit of story, how everything have appeared. So 2009, uh, one person or group by, known by the name Satoshi Nakamoto uh, published the white paper of Bitcoin and the network have started. So uh, some other systems and cryptocurrencies have appeared then, but that, that was the first one. And again, it's implemented using the idea of blockchain, okay? It's just a cryptocurrency. And because it was just a cryptocurrency, later on, on 2014, that guy, which is just one year older than me, it's 24 now, I think so, um, he was working two years for two years on a cryptocurrencies project. After in the, in the second year of university, he decided to drop out because he was uh, wasting too much time with crypto cryptocurrencies projects, and decided to drop out and travel the world to do, to know some other projects. And he, reali he realized one thing that is just every project was just using working with money. There was not anything in working with general stuff. So he decided to create the Ethereum that let us do anything, like anything you can imagine, even games like CryptoKitties. Does any of you know about CryptoKitties? One, two, three. Yeah, probably anyone looking at blockchain knows about it because it's okay. So. How was that possible to build that? It's because of smart contracts. What is smart contracts? It's something, at the beginning it may look complex and difficult, but the idea is really simple. It's a piece of code that runs above the EVM. EVM means Ethereum Virtual Machine, and this code, runs above that. So it's, it's just like writing some Java code and run it on JVM, something like that. So it doesn't, it may look uh, complicated, but it's not that complicated. So uh, previously I was saying that a, a, a new block is generated when um, there is uh, some change on the data on the chain. So, for example, take the example of yeah, uh, add and subtract. Those, those two methods will be changing something on the chain. Get counter will not change anything, just get data. So, add and subtract, every time these methods are used, they will generate a new block. This block is broadcasted to every node, they need to approve the block, and then it's added to the chain. When, you, when we use the get counter, it just goes to one of the nodes and requests the data. It doesn't generate any block. It doesn't give any reward to the miners. Nothing happens. It stays, stays the same. And now, now you may be asking, um, I said, it's everything is possible to do with that? Yeah, really everything. Because, for example, and again, Bitcoin is not blockchain, 
uh, Bitcoin uses blockchain is not blockchain and Ethereum also uses the idea of blockchain and the idea of, of blockchain is the idea of decentralized okay for example does anyone knows about IPFS you know you are okay all oh, right okay <laughs> we'll talk later uh, and about the others, does anyone know, apart from you? Okay, so uh, correct, me, correct me if I'm wrong. Most of these systems here, the, 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 sorry, firstly, the IPFS, it's a decentralized um, data system. IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System. It wants to, they want to, to replace the HTTP. The HTTP is a centralized system. Everyone that wants to connect to a website needs, a serve, needs to have a server running. So if I go for techinporto.com, for example, I don't know if the link is there, but uh, if I go there, there's, there's a need that to be a server running with the website. The idea of IPFS is if I go to a website, the first time it downloads the website to my computer, and the next time, even if I don't have internet, the website is totally on my computer, so I can visit the website anytime I want. It's downloaded to my computer. So if the main system goes down, and I have, I have visited the website, and I have the website on my computer, and I'm connected to the internet, if someone wants to connect, the main, the main system is down, but my system is up. So I will be another node on the network. So the site, the website almost or never goes down. That depends on how much people visit it. That's the idea IPF, the, from the IPFS. IPFS and the Ethereum was so powerful that Experti, Steemit, I don't remember the name of that, status and even it lands, it's all built upon IPFS and Ethereum. So it's possible to do anything. And the game I showed previously, it was uh, the cryptocurrencies, it's just a collectible uh, kitties. That is some to toy, a thing just online, uh, like an image or something. Um, nothing special, but currently it's possible to build 3D games on the Ethereum. I don't know if any of you know about, no, you probably know, about Loom, Loom Network, you know about it? That time you don't know. <laughs> so Loom Network published uh, an SDK recently that uh, let people deep, um, do games using Unity 3D. If anyone, uh, any of you here do games using Unity 3D and doesn't know a thing about blockchain, it's possible to do a, a 3D game with Unity inside blockchain. And again, the idea is uh, to never lose anything because it, it's, it keeps there. Uh, let, let me tell you just one thing that is, um, Vitalik, when he created the Ethereum, his main idea is because he was playing an online game and he lost his favorite powerful of his character. So he was so sad that he stopped playing games. And after some time, he discovered Bitcoin. At the beginning, he doesn't know what is, it was good for. But then, like I said, he traveled, he decided to build something different and he built the Ethereum that let us build anything above that and like really anything. So uh, for people on, on this field or outside of this field, I'm currently not on this field yet. I hope will be soon, but still. Um, in the blockchain world, we know it's, for, for now, we still know it in, in three levels. The first one, when the Bitcoin appeared, okay, it's not the, the only system that supports only money transactions, but it was the first one. 
the blockchain 2.0, it's known as when the smart contracts appeared. Uh, Ethereum is not currently the only one having smart contracts and not the only one that you can do like anything. Hyperledger also let us do that, uh, but was the first one. And the blockchain 3.0, um, really I don't know that much to tell you, but looks like it's a, the idea of getting cloud nodes and something. I don't really understand that yet, so I can tell you that much. Going on, just one, one last, thing, last thing, more or less. Um, permission and permissionless um, networks. For example, take on, taking the example of Bitcoin and Ethereum, they are permissionless. Why? Because it's totally open. The network is open. I mean, if I want to be a miner, I connect to the internet, to, to the net, to the network, to the, the blockchain network, and I start mining because it's open, anyone can join that, and anyone can mine and get rewarded. If it's permissioned, like the Apple Ledger, for example, and even the, the Ethereum letters do this, but it, it's a, just a, another future. Um, to connect to the network, we need to have the IP of the machine that's going to connect needs to be registered on the network. I mean, for example, it's like going inside here. We just go, we just came here because we are registered here. So it's like connecting to this network. Um, I have uh, one slide here that is too big, but I have the image on my phone. So let me just open it. These are a few myths that some people um, still think. There are some myths that's, that are not true, obviously. Uh, first one is blockchain is not a cryptocurrency. I've said that. Uh, blockchain is a technology behind the cryptocurrency. Blockchain is the idea of decentralized um, if you have heard more about it, it's, it's, most people say it's really expensive because think of that database that every node is connected and it's decentralized, but every, every node on this network have the same database. So this database is replicated all over those nodes, for example, uh, Bitcoin has more than, I think it doesn't, I don't know. About Bitcoin, I don't know. Uh, Ethereum has currently more than one terabyte of data. So if you want to be a miner, you need to have at least one terabyte of disk space. Is quite too much, I think so. But it keeps growing on. So it's, it's one of the problems. Um, blockchain need miners, that's a lie. Bitcoin need miners, Ethereum need miners, um, but not all of those uh, blockchain systems need miners. For example, Hyperledger doesn't. Blockchain needs countless nodes, that's a lie again. Um, I told you that when, uh, when um, a change is done on the network, at least 50, uh, 51% of the network, of the nodes on this network, need to approve the new block to be added to the chain. So at least it needs to be three nodes. But yeah, the more it has, the, the more security it is. There is only one blockchain, it's also not true. Distribu distributed ledgers technology is a blockchain. No, uh, it's a myth also. But uh, blockchain is a type of distributed ledger technology. So I 
Hyperledger, for example, is a distributed technology, but not currently a blockchain. It, it, it's kind of, doesn't matter here. Blockchain is just a finance, it's not. You can build games. And smart contract as are uh, legal documents. It's not, it's, it's just piece of codes like you've seen here. Um, I have one, one video here that was, I've done some code. Uh, I said that I have uh, on, the, on the presentation, I said that I have a, a, a user case, but when I wrote that title, I had a different idea from what I have now. So a lot of things have changed, um, but still I decided to, to take something. So let me show one video I have here. So, uh, where is the mouse? Okay. So, uh, can I start from the beginning? Yeah, okay. So, this is, uh, this is the, um, it's known as the Ganache, uh, only Ganache. It's a, a, a program, that, a tool that lets you have a network with 10 accounts. That lets you do a lot of stuff and it it's ma makes easier your work because if you want to start a network and create 10 accounts, give money to, this, to those 10 accounts and then you are deploying something and you do this wrong to restart this network, you are losing too much time. So with Ganache, it's really, really easy. Um, my idea here is uh, just Polish uh, new car. It's, uh, it was an idea. Um, so every time I publish some th something, it's added to the blockchain. And then uh, it's a, every time I add, it will be a new block on the chain. So um, these, these nodes uh, doesn't have like a transaction. It's more of a... Um, a piece of data, like um, what, what it was represented. I created a, using this contract called, smart contract called car or car factory with some data, I have something, some, some code there. Uh, I built with this data, that data, and this is what the block contains. It's different from just having a transaction on, on, the, on the block. Um, this here, it's calling uh, the contract, it's calling a method called get car. I will show the, the contract then here. And then it shows the result of the get car ID. So I added, um, I added uh, two cars, fake cars, one with the 143, I think. So it will be shown here. So starting again. Okay, so car slash zero, it was the 143. Again, it was a request, it was just a view, it doesn't generate any block. Uh, I also made a button to buy, but didn't make anything with that. So that's all it is. And there's a, okay. Code is, is really simple. So, uh, to call a method, it's just contract. The contract is assigned above. Contract dot methods dot and then the method and something inside. It, it's JavaScript code, nothing special. Just like I said, it's something simple. It's like a Java class. Can have a constructor. It's no not necessary. Um, let me show you this. Uh, Okay. Okay, I missed this twice. Yeah, doesn't matter. But the methods are really simple. And what most people say is that the m most difficult thing to do here is the, the contract code because 
Um, the, the JavaScript code or the website is not that complicated because if you miss, you can change that at any time. And even if you are using IPFS, it will update your code so you can fix it. Uh, the smart contracts are different even because, more because uh, it, it's saved on the chain and it couldn't be changed. So if you make some mistakes, it will be on the chain forever. Um, so I think that's it. I hope you got an idea. Uh, any questions? There's no questions. Uh, what's your opinion on the scalability of some of the most popular uh, blockchains? So, uh, for example, Ethereum, you can build a lot of stuff on top of that. How do you think that we, it will scale um, uh, against, even even if it's only financial, a thing against things like Visa or MasterCard? You probably have seen this a few days ago that Vitalik Buterin said, uh, I, it's, it's a nice question because how much transactions Visa does per second? It's 24,000, right? Bit Bitcoin currently does six, I think. Ethereum currently does 15. But Vitalik said a few days ago that he wants to change that to 1,000 per second. So if that changes, it's it will be a big change, yeah. If that doesn't change, I don't really know where this is gonna stop because we have seen this network going down once when the crypto kit is appeared because there was so much people going to the network, so much transactions that the network goes down. And just like the example of Bitcoin, there was a lot of people buying Bitcoin and then it, it just goes down a little bit. Some people started to selling it, but since it just six transactions per second. I want to, uh, to, to transfer something now, but the transactions will be um, uh, processed like one hour later. So instead of have Bitcoin at 16,000, I have at 14,000. So it changes, it's a problem, yeah. Um, I. I I think it's, it's going to change to 1,000, I hope so. But that will be interesting. You, you have another example, for example, the, the Hyperledger. You know about Hyperledger? So it, it works different. I think it does more than 1,000 or 5,000. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I, I think that that's one of the difference. Um, the, the smart contracts normally aren't that complex. Are real things that are really, really easy, like five, six lines, not much more than that. Um, because the bigger it is, the most gas it uses. The gas, it's, the, it's uh, something that it's uh, the people, the, the person that uses the method needs to pay some ether in, case, in the case of Ethereum to paste the miner and the miner block, uh, mines these blocks and get the reward, the ether. So that's, that's why it's different even because in Hyperledger there's no mining. And it, it's different because of all of those methods, all of these consensus methods, everything. It's, it's a blockchain, it's an idea what happens on every framework that that makes the difference any other question
quick question is just that uh, won't this technology, won't this type of uh, data propagation and mesh uh, type of technology make it uh, easier to propagate things like malware? Sorry, I think I understand, uh, but can you repeat? The, the presentation you did was to use blockchains to create uh, video games, applications, and uh, other stuff. So this type of technology won't make it easier to propagate uh, malware. I'm, I'm going to give the example for, uh, imagine that uh, one of the applications, one of the download links for Chrome, for example, uh, was infected with malware. You can maybe have a thousand people download that version of Chrome that contains the malware and just block it from the website. But using blockchain, that's not possible, I think. You are talking about the example of uh, IPFS, the yes. decentralized, okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. If you, if you make your website, if you make w your website with a virus, yeah, that uh, anyone that goes there will get that virus, you're right. But about the Ethereum is different because you have to, mm, I think it doesn't happen. You need to do some code that does, is that, I don't think that happened. But yeah, with IPFS, it can happen. At the, at the end, blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer idea. The, the torrents are also a peer-to-peer -peer idea. So. And that happened. Uh, the that happened. That happened, that happened. I, I didn't told one thing, but uh, when we are building a blockchain, uh, a private, private blockchain using the Ethereum, that Ethereum let us do that. Uh, every node on that network needs to have the same genesis file. Because, for example, imagine that we are, we, we here are starting a, an Ethereum uh, test network. And one of us decide to start his node with a different genesis just by putting some money there to him that node will be rejected because the Genesis file is different than the others. If, if, the, if this will be allowed, there will be so much people getting rich. So <laughs> yeah, hi. Hello, um, Hello. so uh, my question is related to more uh, conceptual rather than technical. So for example, if I, as a Bitcoin miner, uh, mines a Bitcoin, which means I need to be a node inside the ecosystem, right? Uh, when I mine a Bitcoin, what is the motivation of others to accept the Bitcoin that I mine? Because you said uh, you need 51% approval from the nodes uh, to accept another uh, Bitcoin uh, or uh, another block inside the, in the, in the blockchain, right? So why would others approve or disapprove uh, a block that I created? Okay, so imagine that there is four nodes on the network. One of them um, mined uh, the next block. He broadcasted, or let, let's take another example. Two of them mined a block at the same time. So the two of them will broadcast uh, this node to the network. One of them will be accepted, the other one will be rejected. How exactly this works? It's kind of complicated and I, I can't answer that, really. But uh, again, it's, it's different from network to network, block, blockchain framework, because for example, or the cons it's more the consensus method, because on the, on the Bitcoin, uh, if you are if you are mining and your node uh, mined the block that will be accepted, you will be rewarded, but the others don't. In proof of stake, it's different because I think most of them, if not all, are rewarded in a different way, but are rewarded. So for example, most people say, and I agree with that, the proof of work is the most unfair system 
the most unfair consensus system because if the two of us mine at the same time, you're accepted, mine doesn't, we both spend the same time, the same computer power, you get rewarded, I don't. But that, that's only uh, the consen consensus method. That's more, I don't know, opinions. How is how this get accepted? I don't really know. I think it, it's not about being the first or not. I, I don't think it's that. But really, I can't answer that, sorry. <laughs>